I, Verity, thirty-two, female, was living with my husband of five years before things took a bad turn. Things were great for us in the beginning, but everything changed once my husband Bernard got a promotion. I noticed that he was being very cocky and arrogant, and I even began to notice him distancing himself from me. I talked to my mother-in-law, who I trust very much, about the situation. I really don't know what's wrong with him. Have you tried talking to him about it? Yes, I've done that many times, but he always brushes it off and acts like everything's fine. And when I suggest stricter means, like going to a couples counselor, he gets really angry. Oh goodness, that doesn't sound at all like my precious Bernard. Yeah, maybe because you coddle him too much, and those rose-colored glasses you got on prevent you from seeing the truth. Anyways, things were going awry for some time after he got his big promotion. A couple of months after enduring his insufferable behavior, I found some alarming news on Bernard's phone. I was cleaning the bedroom and I noted that he had left his phone dangerously close to the edge of the bedside table. I moved it, but at that moment I saw him getting a text from someone named Pizza Hut. How peculiar! I thought to myself. My curiosity got the better of me, and I opened the message to see a slew of horrid things going on. My husband was cheating on me. I saw the myriad of texts and inappropriate pictures. They were flooding my eyes, and it was all so overwhelming. At that moment, I heard some heavy footsteps coming towards the door. I quickly locked the phone and put it back where I found it. Bernard came in. Verity, where the hell are my socks? They're here, darling. I I was just tidying up the room a bit. Why do you look like you've just seen a monster? Because at that moment I had just seen a monster standing in front of me. Was no longer my sweet Bernard, rather an unrecognizable beast who managed to ruin my whole life and shatter my whole heart in mere seconds. But of course, I was too weak at the time to talk about what I just saw. I just murmured something about how I was experiencing period cramps, and he left. That night, I sobbed into my pillow with my cheating husband sleeping peacefully right next to me. Even though I was extremely saddened, I was also extremely angry as well. How could this man cheat on me after everything? I held on to this anger though, and waited to expose my lowlife husband to none other than his mother. Early in the morning, before Bernard woke up, I opened his phone and gathered all the evidence I needed. Turns out that his mistress's name is Rita. I sent all of the information to my phone, put his phone back where I found it, and waited patiently for Deborah to arrive. Deborah arrived shortly after Bernard left for work. When I showed her all the horrible things I found, she too shared the same look of horror and disgust that I held when collecting all of this data. After moments of complete shock, she spoke up. We need to do something about this. He's absolutely gone crazy. I'm, I'm so hurt, Deborah. I know my baby, but we'll get through this. I'll call him right now. Deborah proceeded to call Bernard. She put him on loudspeaker. Bernard, I swear to God, all of this better be some stupid and sick prank because if any of this turns out to be true, I don't know how I will look you in the face again. Mom, slow down. What are you talking about? Who the hell is Rita? There was a silence, and although nothing was said, everything was indeed confirmed. He was cheating on me, and by the looks of it, it had been that way for quite a while now. You better get back home right this instant. We need to have this discussion face to face. Deborah hung up the phone, and for the next thirty minutes, while waiting for Bernard to return, I was completely inconsolable. Bernard finally arrived home, but he appeared to have a special surprise with him. He brought Rita. What is the meaning of this? Is this the wench? Don't call her that, Mom. I love her. What did you just say? Yes, Verity. I am sorry you had to find out this way, but I guess now is about as good a time as ever. I am in love with Rita. She makes me happy. Lately, I've realized I am at a higher status than most of the things of my past life. I have to elevate myself, and to put things lightly, you are like the older version of a gaming console. Rita is like the PS5. Bernard, 
What are you saying right now? Do you know what you've put Verity through? And you, how dare you get with a married man? Have you no shame? Well, ma'am, I believe that we're soulmates. He's in love with me and I'm in love with him. We're going to start a family together. Oh, so you think that you're going to change this man? Newsflash, honey, a cheetah will always be a cheetah. And based on what he's just said, he will always be searching for the bigger and better and newer thing. You're not special, sweetie. Take my advice and leave now before things get worse. I can see that you're young. You still have your life ahead of you. You can't be tied to a sick man like this. Enough! I know you're hurt, Verity, but it's not my fault you let yourself go. You have to understand, as a man, I have needs. And Rita gives them all to me. I guess this all goes without saying, but I want a divorce. As if my heart couldn't shatter anymore, it miraculously did. I was too stunned to say anything. Again, I began to zone out of this dreadful situation, but in the peripherals of my mind, I could hear barely audible shouting from Deborah and Bernard going back and forth. After some shouting, I received a text from my family lawyer. A great uncle of mine had recently passed away, and part of his will indicated that once the inheritance money had been properly divided amongst the appropriate individuals, only then will the actual amount be disclosed to the recipient. I found this to be particularly annoying, but that was just my great uncle Henry. He had a knack for being dramatic. The text read, Dearest Verity, as always, I hope you're well. As you know, your great uncle Henry has left some inheritance money for you. But unfortunately, it's going to take a bit longer than expected to process the proper funds. Some of your family members are arguing about who gets to keep what. Please call for further clarifications if need be. Take care. Knowing my crazy and toxic family, I highly doubt that there'd be any money left over for me. I was always last place and the same rang true for my failed marriage. I zone back in to hear more commotion. Verity, are you even listening? What is there to listen to? Bernard has shown us who he is, right? He doesn't want to be with me anymore, right? That's that. I can't fight for someone who won't even fight for me, for us. But I will say this, Bernard. By the time your karma is finished with you, you will wish you'd never been born. I'm done here. And with that, I gathered up whatever strength I had left, went to my room to pack up some of my things and walked out the front door. As I was leaving, Deborah was calling after me, assuring me that everything will be fixed. Bless her heart. She still believed that part of her sweet baby boy was still alive, but alas, all that I saw was a hollow shell of a man. For the next couple of weeks, I rented cheap motel rooms and all the while, Bernard began processing the divorce papers. Bernard had friends who could help speed up the process. He acknowledged that this was hard for me and he wanted to speed up this process as fast as possible so that I didn't have to suffer any longer. Sounds to me like a guilty conscience. At this point, I was so drained. I had cried all of my tears out. Not long afterward, approximately six months after the debacle went down, Bernard and I had officially been declared as divorced couple. Throughout the whole debacle of who would get what and what would be split, I decided to be cordial about everything. Part of the reason why the process was fast was that, surprisingly enough, we were very agreeable about most things. Bernard, being the selfish guy he was, wanted to keep most of his money, knowing that I didn't have a dime to my name, considering I was a housewife. Even though this was the case, I desired none of that money, because it was the same money that caused him to be so selfish and evil. Well, I guess that settles it then. It was nice knowing you, Verity. I hope you take care of yourself. I hope you rot in hell where you belong. I have no desire to keep in contact with you, so please refrain from doing so. Have the day you think you deserve. I stomped off, obviously jaded and hurting still, but I was picking myself back up again. While I was still legally married to Bernard, I used the money in our shared account to kickstart a small business I had in mind. A little cafe that I began to rent. It was a way for me to make money since I knew that I would be getting little if nothing from this divorce settlement. 
As I was walking to my apartment complex that I began renting shortly after kickstarting the business, I received an email from George. I was very confused by this as I wasn't expecting what I read from the email. Dear Asperity, my apologies once again for the awful marital situation you're going through, but I have some good news to share with you. Please contact me at your earliest convenience. Three hours later, George and I were meeting at my quaint little cafe to discuss whatever news was so important that he couldn't tell me on the phone. Hello, George. I hope you're well. Hey, Verity. I can tell that you're hurting, so I'm not going to take up much of your time. Let me cue to the chase. You've got the inheritance. What? What, what did you say? You heard me right. You've got the inheritance. I'm so sorry that everything had taken such a long time to finalize. You see, the truth is, your great uncle Henry appeared to have left most of the money to you. This is a letter of his that you need to read now that all of the conditions have been met. The letter read as follows. My dear Verity, I know life has been unkind to you. You have always been put in last place by both friends and family, but I have decided that enough is enough. No more will you be subject to pain and humiliation. Please accept this inheritance money and use it to ameliorate your life in the best way that you can. Knowing your toxic family members, they most likely won't be too happy with the distribution of funds, but I don't care. All I care about is your health and well-being, which is why, if you are reading this now, you now know that all of the money you are about to receive is wholly yours. You shan't go through any troubles or negotiations with people. I wanted to exempt you from this messy process, hence why you are receiving this money now. I know you are going to do wonderful things. All my love, your great uncle Henry. By the time I finished reading the letter, I was sobbing. Some customers got up and left due to the embarrassing scene, but I didn't care. I was overwhelmed with joy. It was so refreshing to hear some good news after months and months of crying the night away, wondering how and why all of this happened to me. Huh, how much is it? It's $170,000. I gasped. That was a lot of money. In fact, that was more than enough money to help me continue to grow and expand my business. I thanked George profusely for his loyalty and kindness, and he went on his way. That night, I called Deborah to tell her everything. You said the amount is how much? Yep, you heard me right, Deborah. We were still keeping in touch despite everything, as I mentioned. I trusted her. At least for a while, because what she did next was completely deplorable. I woke up the next morning to a slew of angry texts from none other than Bernard. Literally less than 24 hours after telling him not to contact me again, here he was contacting me. Despite my better will, we decided to meet up to discuss whatever it was that was pressing him. I guess part of me still had hopes that things would change. We met at my cafe. So, this is the infamous cafe. It's cute, I guess. What do you want, Bernard? Haven't you taken enough from me? Let's cut to the chase. Half of that money is mine. What? My mom told me everything. She told me about the inheritance money that finally came. Talk about good timing, am I right? But anyways, we need that money. You must have lost your mind. If you think I'm going to give you anything... Besides, don't you make enough money as is? What exactly is your obsession with me? Why didn't you care? I was breaking your heart and you didn't even bat an eye. What are you talking about? You knew I was a wreck. You were literally behind the wheel for all of the turmoil you caused me. You watched me suffer. What else do you want from me? When will you be satisfied? When you see me in my coffin? Enough. I don't have time for this. Just give me my money and I'll be on my way. I need the money for my wedding to Rita. What exactly makes you think that you're entitled to this money? Are you sick in the head? The inheritance situation was happening whilst we were still married. So technically, that money belongs to me. I paused. I felt embarrassed. I didn't know the technicalities like that. Was something like that possible? So, give me my money. If I'm ever going to give you any money, 
We'll need a lawyer present. I have heard what you've said. Go home. I will contact you in the morning. Bernard begrudgingly left, angry because he couldn't control me any longer. If we'd still been married, I would have given him my kidney if he asked me. But now I can't even look this man in the eye without feeling disgusted. In the morning, I called George as well as the lawyers who were helping us out with the divorce. I explained my situation, and everyone agreed in unison that what Bernard was doing wasn't logical or right, because the inheritance money was finalized after signing the divorce papers, and any money that comes my way is mine, which is exactly what I thought. But Bernard tried to gaslight me into believing that I owed him anything. Angrily, I drove to the house that I used to call home for five years, and I knocked on the door. Eventually, someone answered. "Oh hell, move! I'm not here for you. I'm here for your evil fiance. What is the meaning of this? Don't you dare come into my house and cause a ruckus. Oh, you mean our house?" The house that we built together. You have a lot of nerve treating me the way you do, as if I wasn't good to you. I genuinely believed that you should get your head checked because there are some screws loose. Where is your mother? At that moment, like clockwork, Deborah came out of the kitchen. Now, what's all this noise I'm hearing? Deborah, how could you do this to me? What do you mean? You told your trifling son about the inheritance money. What for? Don't speak to me about my son that way. And I told him because, because well, I believe that perhaps we could partake in some of that money. I should have known where Bernard got his cheating habit from. I guess the apple didn't fall far from the tree. All of you are sick. You're trying to siphon money from me. I'm struggling to keep afloat, and something good has happened to me for once in my life. And you people want to take that away from me. Well, too bad. I went on to explain to the bumbling fools that the money I got was completely mine, and that because the divorce papers were signed, there was no way for any of these people to get their grubby hands on my money. Of course, Bernard didn't like this news at all, and he proceeded to go on a little rampage, yelling and cursing and even breaking things. I did see his true colors because you won't believe what happened next. Bernard got into his car and began to drive off. I thought that we were done arguing and that he went somewhere to cool off. But when I arrived at my cafe, I found my store had been vandalized. The windows were broken and most of the furniture was damaged. I immediately knew who did this and I called the perpetrator. Bernard, really, you vandalized my shop? It had to be done. You aren't giving us the money. Maybe now you cooperate. I know that you don't have security cameras, so good luck trying to press charges. Wow, just wow! I cut the call and proceeded to call my good friend George to assess the situation. George began to laugh. We got him now, Verity. What do you mean? He's ruined everything. He's ruined my life, and even if I fix it, he'll come back again and again. Don't you see, Verity? We can sue him for this, and with that being said, we can also renegotiate the terms of your divorce settlement. What? But I don't have evidence. Yes, you do. There's always evidence, and sure enough, there certainly was. I discovered that the cameras that came with the building were still working. I was under the impression that they weren't functional, and I caught Bernard's vandalism very clearly. I brought this evidence to George to collate and compose a case against Bernard. Thankfully, our case was well received, and because of the nature of our tumultuous relationship, as well as the collection of all of the verbal and emotional abuse that had happened to me, I was highly favored, and the judge determined that I will be receiving twenty thousand dollars from Bernard in damages. This obviously made Bernard fill up with rage, and he proceeded to appeal this. But time and time again, his appeal was rejected. Now that I have all this money, I can properly cater to my cafe and allow it to grow and expand. The last I heard of Bernard, Rita, and Deborah was that they were all constantly quarrelling and bickering. And word on the curb is that Bernard has been spotted several times with a young and attractive blonde woman on his arm.